Um, I've been asked to talk about pH of uh, water, soil, um, and is it important, do I test it, etc. Yes, it is very important, uh, and I do occasionally test it. Happy birthday to, to Bonsai Empire, uh, and congratulations, Oscar, on a phenomenal project, um, and for bringing uh, Bonsai to the masses um, through the medium of the interweb. Uh, so well done. For the majority of people with um, sort of standard sort of bonsai practice using a standard bonsai fertilizer, sort of standard kind of bonsai mix, and by that we mean kind of like akadama, kiryu, pomace, lava, kanema, that those types of bonsai salts. It shouldn't be something that you need to sort of give too much consideration to unless you're fertilizing excessively. Um, but realistically, more what's more important than say the pH is uh, the idea of um, the amount of salts. Uh, the total dissolved solids either in the water or in the soil uh, so we're sort of talking about excessive fertilizing if you put too much fertilizer in the soil um, then you can get a big salt, salt build up if you're using particularly heavy uh, hard water uh, where there's a lot of dissolved solids um, so if you're living in a, in a hard water area like i do here um, you can get a build up of salts uh, within the soil which then makes it difficult for the soil to absorb nutrients for a start uh, it also makes it very difficult for um, the plant to absorb moisture and those nutrients as well. Um, so the pH of the soil um, is very, very important uh, in terms of um, the absorption of nutrients, uh, as well as a um, sort of healthy growing environment for, for the tree and for the, the, the microbes uh, and the fungus and such like that um, are essential for a healthy tree. Uh, generally, the, the soil in a, in a sort of an organic sort of system will kind of be really sort of self-regulate as long as you're not kind of throwing too much at it. Um, uh, by that we mean like adding too much kind of um, you know, aggressive fertilizer uh, or, the so or, the, or the water being too um, salty. Uh, so, like I say, for, for the majority of people, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but if you're really kind of uh, pursuing an aggressive um, regime of chemical fertilizers and things like that, then you will begin to sort of notice these issues a little bit more. Um, so realistically, the, the, the thing to sort of consider uh, is the, the sort of the salt content of your pot and using rainwater will help to um, reduce the impact of the, of, you know, like the hard water, if you live in a hard water area, such as I do. Um, and you know, using a sort of um, a, a gentle action uh, fertilizer. So you know, obviously, people talk about biogold being um, really, really good. It is because it's it's quite a gentle action. Um, there are some chicken manure fertilizer pellets, for example, out there that are really kind of high in salt, uh, and aggressively using those uh, in a sort of containerized environment can lead to that sort of high salt buildup which then actually reduces the, the tree's ability to absorb moisture and absorb that fertilizer itself. Okay. Particularly if you're also in a, an area where you're not getting a lot of rainfall, there isn't that same kind of like um, water passing through the pot uh, and taking away and leaching some of those salts out, those excessive salts out. So um, I've noticed that a lot this year uh, with my own trees because we've had a lot less rain uh, than we normally do. And so obviously I've been using a lot more um, tap water uh, the water that we have here is quite high. Um, I think it's 350 parts per million. Um, uh, so it's sort of on the medium to, to hard uh, range um, of, of, of tap water. Uh, and so I noticed with trees that I was fertilizing relatively heavily, and then that sort of tap water on, on top of that, I was starting to notice some uh, sort of nutrient deficiencies, um, sort of burning of leaves, and just a general kind of not as vigorous type of growth. And that wasn't when we sort of took talking about nutrient deficiencies, it's not that there's a nutrient deficiency in the soil because all of those nutrients were there, it was just the, the plant was unable to, to pick it up because of the, that sort of salt um, imbalance within the soil. Um, so I eased off the fertilizer, I gave it a really good sort of, uh, sort of drench through, tried to wash some of those excess salt out. But realistically, when you're kind of like doing that with the, with the tap water, it doesn't really help. Um, so yeah, that's the, 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 the kind of the things that I sort of consider uh, much more so than the pH, because the pH of the, of the tap water that I've got here is around about seven-ish, uh, but really it's, the, it's that sort of total dissolved solids that's the kind of the, the, the key thing. 
Um, so it is important to kind of test for it or to, to, to be kind of aware of it. Uh, if you are looking at testing for pH of water, um, then you can buy pH strips, which are which will give you a good kind of vague um, uh, ballpark figure uh, for what the pH of your water is. And ideally, you, you kind of want to be, um, the water wants to be no more than about sort of 7.5. Ideally, once you start getting above that, then um, some of the more acid loving uh, plants, the pH of the, of the, of the soil might start to, to rise. So just go towards more alkaline. Um, so things like azaleas uh, will, will sort of tend to, to start to suffer in very kind of high pH um, water environments. But realistically, it's the pH of the soil that's the key thing, uh, which is one of the reasons why canama soil is used for those. Um, and also excessive fertilising of, of azaleas will also push the, the, the pH of the soil up. Um, uh, in order to test for, 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 for those, obviously I said uh, the strips are good, but you can also use digital uh, testers. Uh, I do have one. I do test the, the pH of my water every every so often. Uh, it's very important that those, um, they're calibrated regularly, so using um, the, the proper calibration methods with uh, pH buffers, making sure you get the, the, the the measurements correct is very important but as i say for most people just a, a ph strip will give you a, a rough idea of, of where you're at there um, you can buy soil testing kits um, which are basically um, a bunch of chemicals which will turn colors certain colors when in contact with um, various different uh, elements uh, and so this is just a basic soil testing kit and i can uh, i can check the the amounts of phosphorus potassium uh, etc within um, within the soil if I want to. Um, those sort of things are read as sort of readily available. Uh, but realistically, you can just kind of get a feel for it if you have a basic understanding of what's happening within the pot uh, and what you're kind of adding to it and putting into it. So if you're putting a lot of salts into it, obviously then the total dissolved solids, the salt content of, of the pot is gonna raise up uh, and you may end up with some um, nutrient deficiencies in the plant as a result. Um, and so, pursuing a kind of a, a gentle fertilizing regime uh, and you're also looking at using um, some sort of liquid uh, fertilizers that aren't too aggressive fish emulsion fish hydrolyzate uh, and seaweed extracts and these kind of things uh, should sort of keep the, um, the 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 sort of salt levels of the, of the pot um, fairly low there are uh, testers for uh, total dissolved solids as well which i do have one i do check every every so often um, but generally your, your tap water is going to be a fairly consistent um, uh, level of, um, of sort of like hardness and things like that. So um, something to be aware of for, for sure. Um, and it's the first sort of thing that you should start to think about if you're starting to notice uh, issues within your plant. Um, you know, sort of bearing in mind, just, just try and imagine what's happening within the soil uh, and thinking about the what you're adding to, uh, to, to the soil and how things are interacting. Uh, and so one thing that a lot of trees perhaps um, lack, things like you know, sort of, uh, calcium and magnesium are, are some of those things that are, are often um, sort of lacking within the soil. Um, and there's all sorts of issues that you, that you could be um, facing through uh, the sort of the, the excessive salt content within the soil. Um, so it's not just the pH that's important, uh, but, but thinking about that aspect of your containerized uh, cultivation. Okay, well, I hope that helped. Um, it wasn't scripted, I don't know if you could tell. Uh, but yeah, uh, I do have, have a, you know, been experiencing the, these things every year, um, you know, things, things are different. Uh, and so it's just kind of a learning experience and just trying to figure out um, how best to um, manage uh, in different sort of soil mixes, you know, the different sort of climactic conditions. Um, so it's just part of the, the joy of doing bonsai.